I'm actually, I need to go plug in. I'll be right back. Okay, no worries. Yeah, we're still a couple minutes or two. So welcome everyone. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Jamie. Um, I just pressed the recording, so just a heads up, but um, let me, I'm actually going to um, put up a slide and we can actually start working on the slide even before everyone's here. So let me, let me go ahead um, and then I can in officially introduce the, the webinar too. Um, so, um, so we are, uh, we're a minute or so until I actually start the official webinar, but I just want to announce for the recording, this is the Flipping Your Remote Hybrid Online Face-to-Face -face Socially Distanced Class Cell e-learning webinar. And I'm Jamie Lando, the facilitator. Um, and as everyone's joining, I already have a little something for you to start to do, which is actually in the top left-hand corner, it says instructions, step one. Um, reflect, now don't, um, okay, I'll just read it. Reflect on the five minute YouTube video you already watched about the flipped classroom model and draft a true false question about it. So draft it just like on the side on a piece of paper right now, or you could type it in a, on your phone or, so don't do step two yet is what I'm saying. Just do step one. So kind of while you're sitting there and we're waiting for everyone to get in, draft a true false question about the flip classroom model YouTube video you watched for our webinar. So for everyone who just came in, looks like we have Catherine, Paul, um, Yakov, welcome back. Um, uh, please, we're, we're kind of waiting until everyone's here, but I already have a little tip for you, which is reflect on the five minute YouTube video that you watched about the flip classroom model that I sent ahead of time and draft a true false question about it. So just write it on a piece of paper or on, um, you know, on your phone or in your Word doc or something. Um, and then we'll do the next thing once everyone gets in. Let's see, we have Shelly and Stuart, welcome. Uh, Mary Beth is getting in here, welcome. So uh, Shelly, Stuart, and Mary Beth, we're just waiting for everyone to get here, but we're actually starting a little activity. And it's step one in the top left-hand corner of this slide, it says reflecting on the five-minute YouTube video you already watched about the flip classroom model, draft a true false question about it. So just write it on a piece of paper, on your phone, or in your notebook. Um, Step one, reflect on the five minute YouTube video you watch and draft a true false question about it. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Megan, you're back. Uh, looks like you're back now. So you could work on this. Too. Yeah, I just added a number two next to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, I see that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and, um, you know, we'll go ahead and get moving because I want to use every, we need every minute of this webinar. You're going to see we're going to do a lot within an hour. So here's the next step. I'd like some volunteers, so at least five of you, let's first start, um, and then um, to start typing now your true false question on the blue whiteboard in front of you. So I guess it's a blue board. And, but you're gonna kinda have to do it slowly because you're gonna see we may end up writing over each other. I don't know how many of you used the whiteboard before, but um, if you go to the little T up in the top left-hand corner, you click tag, and then you pick a color, pick a color that we can see on a blue whiteboard, and then you, you go bring your mouse down and click on the blue whiteboard and type in your question. You don't need to type in true, false, just type your question. So if a bunch of you can just, just start typing, let's see. Not the answer. Oh, it looks like we got someone's uh, half question. So maybe whoever that is, if you can type next to it again, the rest of your question. Good. Okay, keep going. A couple of you. It looks like we'll have some space at the top. Oh, someone used green. Green can be hard to see on the blue color I picked. I'm sorry. Maybe you can, um, shoot. 
try to pick kind of like looks like need everyone's going for the bottom of the whiteboard we need some center of the whiteboard ah purple that's great if yours ended up um, writing over someone else's just go ahead and rewrite it somewhere where we can look I don't want to start deleting things um, so like whoever did the purple um, if you can or the blue because we now can't read that so and whoever's doing the green, the green is just not going to work. <laughs> how, do we, how do we change that color, Jamie? How do you change the color? There should be a little blue Oh, of the existing thing you already typed. Yes. I don't know how to do that. I think you're just going to have to retype it like above it with a new um, color. No worries. Yep. I can delete things, but if I delete them, then it's going to delete everybody. So. Um, Okay, a couple, there looks like there's some space here kind of in the middle right hand side. See that? Maybe someone can type their true false question in there. And it's okay, I have a backup way we're going to be able to read some of these for the ones we can't see. So Dixie, welcome. If you've never used the, uh, the whiteboard function here, Dixie, what you do is go up to the T and um, click on it and then click a color that we can read and then go down to the blue board and type in your true false question based on the flip classroom video we watched. So let's see, it looks like I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've only, we've only got nine questions. So that means six of you haven't posted a question yet. You can actually write anywhere on my slide. So if you're just like, I can't figure out how to put it on the blue, you can put it wherever you want. I don't care. You, you can write it up by the V-State logo if you want. <laughs> um, okay, what is a flip classroom? It's not a true false question. So someone's gonna have to rewrite that as a true false question. Okay, I'll give you guys one more minute to finish. So whoever again wrote the what is a flipped classroom, that's we need that in a true false statement. Let's see, one, two. <laughs> Somebody has some humor <laughs> here. Okay, good. So we've got a bunch on the board. So what school is hopefully you can see you can how to use this Blackboard feature with your students, but Blackboard gets messy. So you kind of have to control the environment a little bit. I'm, I'm sort of letting you guys go with it. Um, but here's the next step. And by the way, this is an activity you could do with your students, not only having them write on the whiteboard, but immediately when they get in, give them a question prompt like this, have them create a true false quiz question based on the content that they watched before. And we're going to talk about why we're doing that. And then you have them quiz each other. So this is your chance. Now it's your guys' turn to answer these questions. So please go ahead and raise your hand and I'll call on you and then you'll unmute your mic and you get to answer a question. And then the student who, or the other person who asked the question will tell you if you're correct. So if you'd like to answer a question, please raise your hand and I'll call on you and uh, you'll let us know. Otherwise, I'll start calling on you guys to answer questions. Raise your hand, pick one of the true false questions, raise your hand and answer it. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll have your peer say if you're correct. Thank you, Yakov. So I'm calling on you, great. So go ahead, which question are you gonna answer? Do flip classes allow students to access content at any time? True. Okay, who asked that question? Is he correct? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, that was me. And you are correct, Yakov. Woo! Awesome. Okay. So guess what? Was that Stuart who asked that question? Stuart, now you get to answer a question. I'm going to go with the upper right. Flip classrooms do not allow for self-pacing. I'm going to say that's false. Correct. Yes. Good. You guys are getting the pattern. Okay. Now, Megan, your turn, right?
Let's see. Um, flipped means remote. I'm going to say false for that one because it can definitely just be a face-to-face -face model. Okay, who asked that question? That's correct. Do you yeah. want to describe it, either of you, a little bit, since that may be a little bit of a tricky question? I would say um, that it can, it's more of a hybrid or doing multiple things at once. It offers different options and it's not just strictly remote. Mm, okay, so guess what? Uh, from what you guys watched from the video ahead of time, correct, you guys are correct about this answer, but you're gonna learn today that actually we can flip a fully online class. Mm. So, I think you might be muted because I can't hear you. I don't know if anyone else can. Who are you talking to, Jamie? Uh, well, you just, Hoa has to, she needs to a answer the next question. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Students have access to class materials outside of class time, and I'm going to say true. It's my question. It's correct. Okay. So, Yakov, you actually already answered a question. So, you mind if I call on someone else? How about Mary sure. Beth? You answer one of the questions. I will take flipped classrooms require buy-in. True plus true. That's right. Buy-in from who? All participants. <laughs> right, and also uh, technically, uh, as he said in the video, administrators too, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, Dixie said he's lost. So, Dixie, what we're doing is everyone has put on the board a true-false question about the, the, the video they watched before the webinar, and now we're quizzing each other. So, would you like to answer one of the questions? Or, actually, it's Michael. It's uh, Andrew's turn. Andrew, you, your turn to now answer a question. A flipped classroom does not use lectures. Um, that's false. I mean, it could be true. I, I guess it could be true because um, a lecture might not necessarily be the, the thing that you flip. That, that would be uh, my question. And actually, a flipped classroom can use a lecture because you can have a recorded lecture that somebody watched before they ever got to the, to the classroom. Or you could do a very short lecture at the beginning of class and then flip it, go, try to go back over what the content you had at the beginning of class. So, and my question was, I've lost track of which questions were asked. I'm, I'm trying to keep track and I've lost them. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, me too. I mean, you kind of have to, we got a little messy on our board. That's okay. Um, um, I think we might almost be done though. Did um, we answer a flipped classroom model is more student centered? Oh no, we haven't answered that. Yeah, go okay. ahead. A flipped classroom model is more student centered than other models of teaching. I think yes, but I will say that's true. then you are right. That was one that I contributed. Awesome. Yes, so that's a key uh, main concept of Flip Classroom, that it it's uh, moving away from the sage on the stage to the student-centered um, uh, type of learning. Yes, definitely. Yeah, can anyone else see if we missed any yet that are on the board? Because I think the orange was written over the green. That was Mary Beth. So I think we got most of them. Um, so I'm going to review real quick then. We really got through a lot of the main ideas, right, of this five-minute flipped, we'll talk about it, a video that you watched ahead of time. Uh, you guys got through the main idea of that students can access content anytime online at their own pace. 
we got at the main idea that um, flipping classrooms is very student focused, moving away from the sage on the stage, um, fact teaching teacher model, delivery model. Um, we talked about buy-in, right? Students and faculty and administrators kind of being transparent and aware and supportive of this kind of approach. Um, uh, we talked about in any sense active learning. Um, you know, we didn't necessarily, no one had a question up there about technology per se, although I guess that gets at that question about remote, right? So another main idea that came across in that five minute video was that um, flipping fundamentally leverages technology um, clearly in the, the, the lecture or whatever the content is that you put online, but also it could be in the face-to-face -face portion of the class. So flip classroom model is fundamentally grounded in educational technology. Um, so that would be another main concept we would need to put on here. And, um, and so it uses a lot of different kinds of tools. Um, and ultimately kind of, again, going to that question of flip meaning remote, is that flipped classroom is a form of blended learning, right? It, again, combines face-to-face -face and online teaching. And so face-to-face -face and online are planned together. It's not like um, they, they live, they, they, when you design a flipped classroom, you design those two things together. It's not just like one's an add-on. Okay, so why did we do this activity? Just go ahead and, you know, unmute your mic and share. You don't even have to raise your hand. Why did we do this activity? I felt like it was a good way of demonstrating um, how we can participate in our own learning. Yes. Yeah. Could you connect that more specifically to today's topic? Um, similar to flipped classrooms, there's a sense that the it's the student that's contributing the knowledge, not just it coming from the instructor. Okay, so the very like quizzing that I did was peer led learning and you're saying, yeah, that's student centered. Cool. Yes, that's definitely one reason I did this activity. Others? It breaks the ice. <laughs> it really yeah. opens the door and encourages the students to jump in and start participating. That's very true. Another reason? It's text for understanding of the flipped material. Ah, didn't I just do an accountability assessment with you guys, right? What you just did is a peer assessment. You did a peer low stakes quizzing assessment, right? I didn't give you this quiz. I didn't grade it. Ooh, yes, right? So one challenge of flipping classrooms is that students need to be held accountable to the content that's delivered outside of the face to face. If you've ever done a flipped classroom, that's the struggle, right, students? Or maybe, I don't know, some of you showed up today not having watched the video. Well, guess what? I'm holding you accountable to that, right? This is a mini little peer assessment moment. Um, good, Megan. One other reason I might have done this activity? The activity itself was a flipped activity. You made the ah. assignment ahead of time, and then we had to work on it when we got here. Oh, thank you. Ding, ding, ding. You guys, we just did a flip classroom, right? Within like, you know, 15 minute video and now a 15 minute quitty, quitty, quick, quick, I can't speak today, active learning. Look at that. Within half an hour, uh, 20, you know, 20 minutes, you guys learned about the concept of flip classrooms. So here's what's cool. If you do flip classroom well, guess what? That's it. You don't have to review and lecture anymore then you spend the rest of your class going to higher orders of thinking. Uh, you know, what Bloom taxonomy would call critical thinking, evaluation, uh, comparing and contrasting, analysis, creation, rather than always sticking to the recall. You guys just did the recall. We're done. We're done with the recall. Um, we've gotten it, hopefully, of the main concepts, and now we're going to move on to the higher orders of thinking for today. So that brings me to really what the meat of this webinar is going to be, which is talking about alternative models of flipping. So um, you guys already, we achieved this, described the standard flip classroom. So we've achieved that learning outcome. You have experienced a simulation of flipped online learning just like what Paul said. And we even started to identify low stakes assessment or accountability strategies for student engagement with flipped learning and teaching, right? Um, uh, who was it? It was Megan who picked up on that, right? That I held you guys accountable. I assessed uh, your learning 
um, with the, the flip video before class. So um, literally for the rest now of my webinars, this is just like if you taught this class now, we're going to get to spend 40 minutes on the last bullet point there. Now, evaluating alternative models of flipping. We don't need to now spend any more time talking about the standard flip. Um, let's go to higher orders of thinking, really more complex ideas about it. And the reason why I want to do that is because I think these alternative models of flipping are going to help you in the COVID context. Um, they're really going to give you some really cool ideas to pivot and uh, be innovative with your teaching um, during the situation we're in. So what are these alternative models of flipping? Could Can we flip a fully online class, for instance? Right? That was someone who put up there that true-false question about remote, and I told you, well, actually, you can flip a fully online class. Can we flip a high-flex class? Guess what? We can. That's what I figured out yesterday, and I added to this, this workshop. So uh, here we go. Here are five different alternative models of and so these all go beyond what you learned in the five minute webinar and I'm going to briefly talk through these and then you guys are going to have um, breakout groups to um, and you're going to have an activity right an active learning activity to, to work on these more so alternative models of flipping so all of this comes from most of it from the scholarship of teaching and learning um, literally oh shoot Er, this is my old slide. Um, oh, there should be six on here. Okay, hold on one sec, guys. I'm missing my high flex flip. Hold on. Okay, what happened to it? Um, let's see if it's in this slide. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Well, see, this happened to me the other day too. Um, okay, let me quickly find my. This is my old, shoot, okay. Let me try um, real quick if I can find oh, this file. This happened to me the other day too where it didn't upload my new updated slots. I apologize this for this because I updated this slide. Okay, flipping, okay. Why is this? Okay, it's uploading one of them right now. Let me see if I can. Oh, I wonder if it won't let me override. So many apologies for this, you guys. Okay, hold on. You know what? I think I need to delete these and then. Um, uh, here I was all organized. Ugh. Okay. okay so that one. And then there's this one. I am so sorry, you guys. Exactly, right? You have all these perfect plans. This is my problem lately. I've been updating my slides like minutes before my training and then you know they don't okay so let's let's hope this is the right one if not then my computer is doing funny things on me uh, thank you for understanding ah here it is you guys i found it oh my god okay i'm so happy because when i did this for the new faculty i completely lost a slide so okay <laughs> ta-da look see there's six <laughs> Um, so there's six alternative models, and the reason there are six is because I kid you not, today and this morning I came up with number five. Um, so let me quickly go through this while um, with you guys, and I apologize. We'll see about group, but we're going to do it. We may have a little shortened time. So real quick, number one, that is your standard flip, but instead of the long recorded lecture, it's micro lectures. Okay, so that would mean you don't record an hour long lecture that they watch, but rather a 15 or 20 minute one, right, in these chunks. And the research shows that's really important because, right, student attention spans, um, just like you guys, right? We don't have, we don't want to sit and watch, you know, an hour long YouTube video. Um, so um, they really recommend to do it in micro lectures, right, in video chunks, and similarly to use other people's stuff. 
just like I did with like a YouTube or a podcast or film or textbook publisher provided content. So in many sense, what I just did was a micro, like a version of a micro lecture, right? I pulled it from the YouTube, um, the, this other person's lecture, right, on what the standard flip was. And we're going to have a lot of time to talk through these in a second, so I'm just going to go through them quickly. Two, a weekly, bi-weekly, or every unit flip. This is kind of cool. So I remember when I first learned about flip classrooms, I felt really overwhelmed. I was like, I have to pre-record like every class for the rest of my semester? No, you don't. Alternative models of flipping show you can choose strategically which days of the week, maybe every other week, maybe at only one point of the unit when those concepts are really challenging and you really want them to dig into the, the material. So number two is a lot more, um, it's, it's less work, right? It relieves the workload of always, you know, I don't want to get into too much of this because you're going to do it in your groups, but it, um, it, it, it's much more strategic in where you place the flip, right? And so there was a faculty at Berkeley I was reading about who did flipped every Friday. She called them flip Fridays. So think about that. Again, like strategically where you would place your flips. You don't have to do them all the time. Three, partial lesson flip. So in some sense, I'm doing that right now, right? Some lecturing still occurs in the face-to-face -face class. So, I mean, I know we're virtual, but like imagine this was now our virtual moment. I'm now lecturing you guys on alternative models of flipping. So, but I'm hopefully only gonna take 10 minutes. So, and you place this lecture in between activities. So just like I did, we, we already talked about the standard flip, now we're moving on alternative flips, and I'm doing this in between activities. You did your true false assessment, and now you're gonna see next, I'm gonna have you go into groups and do some group work. So some sense, a little bit what I'm doing is a partial flip, but we're not in a face-to-face -face class. Um, okay, backwards flip. So sometimes this is called a hybrid flip in the literature. I actually was talking with Tim Henkel. He used to be a you know, biology professor here at VSU. You guys may remember him. He worked in the Idea Center. And he and I were emailing about the flip classroom last month, and he gave me this idea. He was like, you know, he's like similar at their university in Florida where he is now. He's like, we're going to have to teach face to face. And so he was like, he's like, I said, what do you think about flipping? And he goes, you know, honestly, he goes, I think I'm going to do a reverse flip. He called it a reverse flip. And then I looked up in the literature and it's called a hybrid flip. But basically, I think the word backwards flip is kind of more fun, thinking sort of like swimming or diving. But it's where your lecture actually occurs in the face-to-face -face class and your active learning occurs asynchronously or synchronously online. And Tim told me he thought this was a good idea for COVID, right? Because think about it, your face-to-face -face class is going to be challenging to do the active learning because of social distancing but you still want to incorporate active learning. So that, I just think this is a really neat way to think about it. Again, like a reverse, a backwards flip, okay? Okay, I may, let me go to six before I go to five. I probably reordered this because I think I'm gonna explain five a little bit because uh, I just came up with it yesterday. <laughs> um, but okay, six, fully online flip. I'm actually kind of doing that right now, right? For the asynchronous part of our webinar, you guys watch the five minute video and um, you um, it was a lower order uh, thinking, right? You, I just asked you to recall and we've summarized that concept. Now in the synchronous part of our class, you are gonna do the active learning for higher orders of thinking, right? We're gonna do breakout rooms, even somewhat of that assessment we did at the beginning. So in many ways, what I'm doing right now is more of all of these, I think, fully online flip. Maybe like six, a little bit of one. Actually, I would say I'm a six, three, and a one right now. Um, and that's the thing I want to point out, too. These are not mutually exclusive, right? They're all sort of using this concept of flip model and then seeing how it can change your understanding of how you teach. So five. <laughs> um, so I. Unfortunately, the little thing I'm worried about is how much you guys know about high flex at this point. Because you kind of have to understand high flex to then understand the high flex flip. But basically, I'm going to quickly share what the high flex is, and I know you're hearing about it, um, and some of you are taking Collins webinars this morning. But high flex technically is defined as when students are, you're synchronously teaching them 
face-to-face -face and online at the same time. And then they can kind of choose to, to bump in and out of which modality. So it's a synchronous teaching model, but it uses video conferencing and face-to-face um, -face at the same time. That's, I'm just for today's purpose, that's how I'm gonna explain HyFlex. We have the capabilities to do that now here on campus, thanks to cameras and some different things they've, they've purchased. But here's what's interesting. I was watching a video yesterday from a, a renowned person in instructional technology, and he was talking about something that I was like, oh my God, that's a high flex flip. Like he was talking about it and I threw out the idea with Colin and Colin was like, you're totally right. So let me explain to you what that is. So again, think generally a high flex is where you're, you're designing your course for your face-to-face -face students but then the other students are remoting in. So it's like you're centering it on your students who are face to face, but then the other students wrote, remote in. But if we flip that the opposite way, and this is what this guy's video told me, and I have it in my reference slide, design first for the synchronous online students, so the remote students, and then for the face to face students bringing into that experience. So you start with the synchronous online, like in your course design, and then you have how you're going to interact with the face-to-face -face students. And they gave an example of using Google Collaborative Docs to do that. So you would do a synchronous video conference like we're doing right now, and you would have your students work on a collaborative Google Doc, and the ones who are synchronous are typing on it as same as the kids that are face-to-face. -face. So you started. Oh, awesome, Dix Dixie. So you're starting with the synchronous online as your like central nodal point. Um, oh, really cool, awesome, Megan. So there you go. So, um, and then what's neat is um, underneath that next bullet point, then you bring in the asynchronous online students. So, and I had not even thought of this. So that's how then you account for the students who couldn't synchronously show up face to face or couldn't synchronously uh, video conference. You then take that same collaborative do doc that your students have already created and the asynchronous students are required to read it, maybe you can even have them collaborate on, and then watch the recording of your synchronous session and then respond in Blazeview or VoiceThread uh, after that. I mean, kind of blew my mind. I was like, oh my god, that's how I could teach like in two weeks, like finally something kind of made sense to me. Like I could meet everyone's needs. <laughs> I mean, if technology works. Um, so really cool. Okay, so I love that you guys are already sort of starting to think. So that's where we want to get to now because we need to move away from me, the sage on the stage, and move to you guys. So um, I have, so let me now get my Google Doc. I have created a Google Doc. So you're going to see now also how to use um, the um, the Google Doc um, idea, right, of collaborative docs if you've never tried this before. Um, so I'm going to put it in the chat, and um, you're all going to want to click on this. And it's an edible live Google Doc that all of you can edit and view. So you want to click on it and have it, like, you know, on your screen, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to now randomly assign you guys to groups, and I'm going to assign you to six different groups, and it looks like we have about 17, 6, 12, 18, we have about um, 17 people in here, so there's going to be about two to three of you in each group, and your group will be, what group you get into, and I'll tell you which one will be, you'll be assigned to that type of alternative flip, right? So if you end up in group one, you'll be standard flipping with loud long lectures. If you end up in group three, you'll be in partial lesson flip. If you end up in group five, you'll be in hybrid flex flip. Okay. The goal of that group work is, and I will put this slide up in your, your little group, is I want you now, if you look at that Google Doc, is in your groups, you will fill out the pros and cons of that particular alternative model of flipping. You'll fill them out. And so now what you want to do, don't fill it out yet, but you want to think with your, your group, what are the pros, right? This is our higher orders of thinking. What do we get from this model? Like, 
yeah, student centered or that, you know, go through that specific one. What's good about it? What do you think it'll be great about? But what are the downsides? What are the limitations? And not only do I want you to evaluate and think of the pros and cons, but I want you to um, um, uh, hold on one, Meg. I'll talk about that later. Um, I want you to also think the COVID situation. So, for instance, um, uh, not only the pros and cons just general about the pedagogy, but now in our COVID like social distancing situation. So, for instance, like I was sharing, the ones that are going to have the active learning face to face that's going to be hard, right, with social distancing. So then you'd have to add like mobile technology to it, right? So really, you know, think back to already what we've learned, like, oh, well, but if you have them do this, you need to have an accountability or an assessment measure. So really think through the pros and the cons and type them in. And I just want to share something. When you get into your groups, everyone's going to be typing at the same time. So the document's going to like move. So just heads up that as you type, if you've never done like everyone typing at the same time, it's going to move around, so just kind of be patient with that. And um, and at the we're going to come back after the groups, and we're going to now have this awesome Google Doc with all of our pros and cons, and we'll have some like quick sharing and talking through some of the the big picture ones that really resonated with us. Like maybe if you guys really think we should talk about five, the high flex flip. That's the one we'll then talk about as a group. Um, so uh, will you turn your mics? Yes, you definitely. Yeah, and small group work just like with students, I'd encourage you to turn on your cameras and your mics. Um, if some of your mics aren't working, last when I ran this webinar a couple days ago, someone's mic wasn't working, so they just did chat and Google Doc texting. But I would encourage you, like any group work, to kind of you know turn on your mics and cameras and and all that and and work work with each other. So. So good question. So I am now going to move you guys into breakout groups and let me, um, I will tell you before I click uh, what group you're in. So, and I, let's see. So Rebecca, Shelley, and Stuart, you're going to be in group one. Corey, Megan, and Yakov, you're going to be in group three. Andrew, Dixie, and Pam, you're going to, oh, I'm sorry. What? Okay, that is so weird. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Corey, Megan, and Yakov, you're in group two. Um, Andrew, Dixie, and Pam, you're in group three. Catherine, Poa, and Paul, you're in group four. And Ilk and Mary Beth, you're in five. And Jason and Susan, you'll be in six. Um, and so I'm going to move you guys into your groups. Like I said, you'll have a good, you know, 15, let's see, I'm sorry. Well, I think we'll have 15 minutes to work, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I will jump into your groups to check in on you and see if I can help. And I will also share this slide with you. Um, but one other quick teaching tip I always do with my students is it takes a little bit in Collaborate to share your slide. It takes a couple minutes. So I always encourage my students to take a quick screenshot with their phone. So if you all right now want to take, if you have your phone near you, take a quick screenshot of the slide. And then you'll have it for you just in case my slide suddenly or like what happened earlier doesn't appear, but it should it should appear if I hopefully do it right. So I'm t pausing to let you take a picture, maybe with your phone, and otherwise um, go ahead and uh, start your work, and I'm moving you into your groups. <laughs> 